Hello, my friends and colleagues. I'm Kara Cooper, myofunctional therapist and owner of MyMyoSpot.com, a telehealth myofunctional therapy practice based in Tucson, Arizona. Today, we're talking about OMDs, orofacial myofunctional disorders, how to screen for them, and how to determine which patient should be referred for a myofunctional therapy consultation. This video is for all clinicians and practitioners that may be part of the Myofunctional Therapy Referral Network. Because oral facial myofunctional disorders can lead to multifaceted symptoms within many different systems of the body, every practitioner should be doing at least a basic screening during the patient exam. You may already be looking at some of these things, I just want to give you the tools and the myofunctional lens to view them through. Okay, let's take a look at patient-reported symptoms of OMDs. These may be the reason you're seeing your patient, or they may just come up in conversation during your exam. For infants, it will be the parent who has a concern. Early on in infancy, the complaints will often arise due to issues with breastfeeding. They may have trouble nursing. They may have digestive issues or colic-type symptoms, difficulty falling asleep or staying asleep, postural issues such as torticollis are common, and especially mouth breathing. Babies should always breathe through their noses unless they have a cold or an obstruction. So loud breathing, snoring, mouth breathing in infants should always be checked out. Note that while this list of symptoms are commonly seen, they are not normal and they do indicate an OMD may be present. If these symptoms in infancy aren't properly addressed, the following symptoms may arise in childhood. Speech issues, sleep problems, including snoring, bedwetting, difficulty falling asleep and staying asleep, and even night terrors. Eating difficulties and digestive concerns are common. Sleep and breathing problems can lead to a wired but tired child. ADHD and other behavioral issues, trouble in school. Note that misdiagnosed ADHD is common in children with sleep and breathing issues. Dental crowding and misalignment, chronic ear and sinus infections are seen, children needing ear tubes placed multiple times or later in childhood past the age of six is a red flag for OMDs. Assuming identification and treatment does not happen during childhood, the following signs and symptoms are the most commonly reported in our adult clients. Headaches, neck and back pain, temporomandibular joint disorder, clenching and grinding, especially during sleep, sleep disorders ranging from snoring to obstructive sleep apnea or insomnia, these can occur together, digestive issues, chronic sinus issues, ortho relapse and dental crowding, and anxiety and depression are commonly seen. If your patient has any of these symptoms, it is a good idea to screen for OMDs. There are a few different ways to do a preliminary screening for sleep disordered breathing, airway health, and myofunctional impairment. Today I am using the Ferris 6 Functional Airway Evaluation Screening Tool, courtesy of ferris.org and the Breathe Institute. This handout can be found at ferris.org tools. I recommend laminating a copy to keep in each operatory or exam room in your office. This way, it can be a guide as you go through the exam. It is a good patient education tool to explain your concerns regarding your patient's airway health and it can be easily disinfected between patients. So let's jump right into the six steps. Number one, difficulty with exclusive nasal breathing for three plus minutes. Nasal breathing is very important for overall health and mouth breathing is one of the most common myofunctional issues. Now time is precious and I know most of you don't have three extra minutes to spend during your appointment just watching your patient try to breathe through their nose. So instead, I recommend looking for an open mouth resting posture. This indicates a tendency to be a mouth breather as well as being an indicator for low muscle tone of the oral facial complex. If at rest, the patient's lips are parted instead of being together and sealed, if they have a shortened upper lip showing the upper front teeth and a protruding or flaccid lower lip, this is a red flag. Number two, is there mentalis strain? Have your patient close their lips and swallow. When there is improper muscle tone and function, the muscles of the chin may compensate and tighten while trying to keep the lips closed or during the swallow. Number three, tonsil coverage. Ideally, we want to see less than 25% coverage. If there is more than 50%, this is a concern. Number four, tongue range of motion ratio. For this step, have the patient open as wide as comfortably possible. Then try to touch the tip of their tongue to the incisive papilla. The incisive papilla, also known in myofunctional therapy as the spot, is the small raised area right behind the upper front teeth. If they can reach their tongue less than halfway to the incisive papilla while opening wide, this is a red flag. In some cases, the patient may be able to reach 
50% or further, only because they are compensating with muscles in the floor of the mouth. So if it appears they are straining, the measurement should be taken at the point where no straining is noted. Additionally, to help evaluate the functional classification of ankyloglossia, aka tongue ties, the range of motion can also be evaluated using a lingual palatal suction, where you have the patient suction their tongue fully into the roof of their mouth and then measure their ability to open while maintaining the suction. Ideally, we like to see this percentage close to 60%. However, you will find that for someone who is significantly tongue-tied, they may not even be able to open more than 5%. If a patient has significant enough restriction, poor muscle tone, or too little space for their tongue, they may not even be able to maintain a complete lingual palatal suction position. If your patient appears to have limited tongue range of motion using either method, they should be referred for evaluation. Number five, dental wear. Do your patient's teeth appear worn? Do they have a history of clenching or grinding their teeth? If yes, this is a red flag. Clenching or grinding can be an indication of sleep disordered breathing. In cases where there is limited airway space or there is a collapsing of the airway during sleep, such as with obstructive sleep apnea, the body may try to keep the airway open by clenching the jaws together and pushing the lower jaw forward. Number six, signs of dental crowding or a high and narrow palate. Since the roof of the mouth is also the floor of the sinus, we want to see a wide, shallow, U-shaped upper arch. If the maxilla is V-shaped or there is a high vaulted palate, we are concerned about sinus space and airway, as well as adequate development. If the patient has dental crowding of their front teeth or a history of dental extractions due to limited space, this is a red flag. And here's the number six supplementary guide. Limited intermolar space is a sign of inadequate or improper growth and development. In addition to just evaluating the look of the upper arch, here's a quick and easy way to estimate your patient's intermolar distance. A number five intraoral dental mirror is 22 millimeters wide. The ideal pediatric width is their age plus 24 millimeters. So for infants, by the time their primary upper molars erupt, the mirror should easily fit between them. For older patients, use a cotton roll. A standard cotton roll is generally 37 millimeters long. Ideally, for a child aged 8 or older, the cotton roll should fit with just a very slight bend. For adults who have adequate intermolar width, the cotton roll should easily fit between the first molars. Each of these six factors in the Ferris 6 screening tool is an independent red flag for sleep disordered breathing and a sign of oral facial myofunctional impairment. At this point, if your patient has any of the reported symptoms and any of the six factors, you should refer to a myofunctional therapist for further evaluation. Keeping in mind the six factors, let's take a look at how easy it can be to identify someone with potential OMDs just by looking at their facial structure and profile. Facial hyperdivergence, aka long face syndrome, is identified by a long, narrow facial appearance, open mouth posture with a shortened upper lip and protruding flaccid lower lip, the patient may have a low tongue posture where you can see the tongue at rest. It may be pressing against the front teeth or even sitting between the teeth. They will have a narrow and high palatal vault, dental crowding, narrow and or a crooked nose, a retrognathic mandible or profile, a retruded lower jaw. If the profile is not in line but instead recedes from the forehead line down through the nose and the chin, this indicates inadequate forward growth. Forward head posture is common, as this helps to open small airway passages. Tired eyes and allergy shiners, this dark venous pooling under the eyes, can indicate improper facial growth, allergies, and breathing or sleep issues. If you see a patient with these facial features, please screen them and refer to a myofunctional therapist for further evaluation. I am happy to offer a free 30-minute consultation to patients referred to my practice in order to evaluate if myofunctional therapy is the right path to improving their health. I hope this explanation of the FAIR-6 screening tool, as well as some of the signs and symptoms of OMDs to look for in your patients has been helpful. If you have questions regarding screening your patients, or if you have a specific patient case you'd like to discuss, please email me, kara at mymyospot.com, or give me a call, 520-485-4224. If you're in the Tucson, Arizona area and would like to schedule an in-person meeting or a lunch and learn for your office, please feel free to reach out. For those who live further away, I'm happy to do a virtual meeting. Thank you for taking the time to learn how to effectively screen your patients for myofunctional impairment. I look forward to collaborating with you soon. Be well.